is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Fresh Finance Podcast. My name is Thomas Elms. I have my co-host here, as always, Kyle Ryan. And today, we're going to have a shorter episode, but we're going to talk a little bit more around strategy of developing a team. Kyle, I know that you and I, this is something that we talk about and how we help the the people that we serve develop it, develop their own teams. But I think just some of the interactions we've had with people on social media but also some some of the conversations that we've been having with our clients, we, we just thought that this could be a really relevant piece of your financial plan that a lot of people don't necessarily consider um, because it's not numbers, it's not coverage per se, um, it's not investments, but it's the idea of actually being strategic and building out a team of professionals that that you can work with where you kind of have this inner circle that you can go to when you have questions about something in particular. And what we really want to highlight on today's episode is firstly, the the people, the professionals that, that you should probably want to consider having in your life, the reasons why you want to have those professionals in your life, kind of the conversation of delegation here once again, and also the difference between kind of the example that we're going to use is, is a hypothetical you know, W-2, maybe one to two income family versus a business owner, because there's going to be differences there and the strategy of who and where you're going to develop those types of relationships. And, you know, to kind of kick the episode off, I'd love to just have you kind of talk through your initial thoughts on this conversation, and then we can kind of lead into what we wanted to talk about. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for that intro, Thomas. Um, you know, this is a, this is a topic when we're talking about building a team, a team of professionals, you know, who does that include? That includes accountants, attorneys, whether that's an estate planning attorney, a divorce attorney, what have you, you know, whatever that is. Um, insurance agents, you know, you have realtors, you'll have mortgage brokers. So at some point in your life, you're probably going to run into one of these people. financial advisors, of course. Right. Um, so at some point in your life, you're probably going to run into these people and whether and in any type of relationship like this, Thomas and I have spoken to this at length before, it's all going to come down to trust. You need a relationship which is founded on trust. Um, you want your professional to act professionally. You want them to act in your best interest. You want them to create value in your life. You go to an account and you want them to do your taxes done correctly. You want them hopefully to save you more money than you otherwise would have. Um, and you want to be able to trust your account when you give them information that they're going to do it in a timely fashion, do it correctly. So Building this team of professionals is very important early on because, you know, one thing we're going to get into later is, you know, say you say you want to buy a house yesterday, like you need to move in a house. You don't want to just find a realtor at that time and just deal with one because you're in a time crunch or a mortgage broker because some professionals are going to be better for you than others. Yeah. So kind of working on who that professional is, developing that trust early on is really important. That's why we wanted to break down what who those professionals are how they can serve you and how it differs between like you mentioned a w2 family versus say a business owner yeah and i think that's that's like the crux or if there was one piece of information that you wanted to take away from this episode we're going to give it right at the intro it's the importance of doing this early and quote unquote when you're younger is you want to build that time and have that time in the relationship to build trust and to build understanding. So not only do you understand them, but they understand you. So when you're at points of high stress, high pressure, um, if you have a major event that needs to be dealt with, you want to have that relationship strong enough at that point to be able to delegate or to rely on or to trust the decisions of that professional in your life. And, you know, we were just talking about this offline, but, you know, we've seen multiple situations here throughout social media conversations about even business owners, like in the process of selling their business and reaching out and building out a team four months before the sale, right? That's your life's work up to that point. And you're going to take four months of a relationship and rely on that advice. Um, and if that's what you have to do, you've got to. But the ideal situation is that person should have built those relationships long before that so that when they're at that height, that precipice of decision making, they have people in their corner that they can trust and rely on their expertise. And, yeah. 
you know, kind of diving into to this conversation of building out your team as, as a W-2 family. And this is kind of your stereotypical, you have a one to two income household. Both of those people are, are W-2, you know, salaried employees. This is a fairly basic setup. Now, obviously there's going to be differences, right? You might um, have equity compensation. You might not. You might have ownership in a company. You might not. There's multiple different variables, but the baseline of the conversation is, you know, firstly, you want to have an advisor. And the reason why I say that is not because we're advisors, but because the advisor tends to be the person that heads up everything else, right? Um, especially one that's worth their weight is you want to have an advisor. You want to have somebody that can handle your taxes, whether that's a tax preparer, CPA, accountant, whatever you want to call them. Um, you want somebody that's going to manage that correctly. Um, you need some sort of an insurance agent. And what I mean by that is normally your health care is covered by your company, right? Now, your, your advisor, your insurance agent might be able to help you select the adequate coverage. But for the most part, that benefit is already provided to you. So from an insurance perspective, we're looking at life, disability, and long-term care, right? And there's a process to developing that relationship where that person can help you understand how much coverage you need and when you should ideally purchase it. But at the yeah. same time, they're going to be able to shop policies and figure out the most cost-effective way for you to do what you're going to do. Right. And then, you know, the, the third on the, the fourth, well, fourth on the list would be some sort of an attorney, you know, primarily looking at estate planning. That's kind of an, as you need service, but it's really important because those decisions, once they're made are ironclad, when tragedy happens, right? Whether that's um, a situation of death, right? You can't take a time machine and go backwards and say, oh, you know what? I, that's actually not how I wanted it, right? Um, but also in the, in the case of, uh, you know, either disability or an inability to make your own decisions, whether that's, you know, medical or financial, having those things in place is really important. Um, you know, and then the realtor, the mortgage people, uh, those are some of the large, you know, real estate's normally the largest asset in most people's financial plans. So making sure that you have people in your corner that are helping you achieve what you're trying to achieve in the correct way is super important. Yep. And and it all goes back, you know, to the original point. This applies to both the W-2 family and the business owner is your time is very valuable and you are probably way better at what you do than an accountant or an attorney or us are at what you do. And vice versa. That's how it's meant to be, right? These are areas of expertise. So it's 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 incredible how how much of an educational role these people can play in your lives and ought to play in your lives, these professionals, right? Because Thomas, say someone comes to us and they're like, I want to retire in two years and we versus five years. And we have to educate them on the difference. Just because you want to do something, it has to be feasible. You can go to the estate planning attorney and say, hey, I want to leave my children these assets. And they could say, hey, that, you know, that might actually not be the best alternative. Yep. Taxes, you can go to your account and say, hey, I don't want to pay a dime in taxes. I don't want to do a Roth conversion X, Y, and Z, but they could educate you on why it might be better to do that this year than delay it in the future. So there's so many different examples, but the point being is that you can't be an expert in everything. You know, that's just life. You can't know everything. So being able to rely on someone that you trust, a professional who will not only act in your best interest, but educate you as to why that is the correct decision for you from every single perspective. And it goes back to what you were saying, you know, where every single profession, professional sees your situation from a different lens. It's very important to understand that. How financial planners look at your situation varies a lot from how accountants, attorneys, realtors, we all look at it a different way, for better or for worse. That's why it's really important, like you mentioned, Thomas, to have that, that sort of lead, that point of contact that can communicate between the different areas. Because say we're doing a Roth conversion as your advisor, but the accountant might not see it as the best solution for you. Yeah. Guess what? The two that your advisor, you and your accountant should be talking. They should absolutely be having that conversation because even if they're arguing or they have a debate about it or there's conversation about what's best, at the end of the day, the person who's going to win is you because they're going to come to the right solution for you without just kind of, you know, we, we see it all the time. Just everyone's acting independently of one another and you need that more holistic, that more comprehensive view of your financial situation by tying all these different professionals together. Yeah. And, and I think that was so well said. And just to add on to that, you know, a personal, you know, a, a professional experience in that, that I had just yesterday, I was 
you know, talking with um, an insurance, a personal insurance agent um, that I do a lot of business with, with my clients, because I like to defer um, any sort of home auto umbrella policies to this guy, because he really knows what he's doing. And we were having a conversation on umbrella coverage, um, umbrella coverage, and then um, the deductible on his auto policies. I thought his original um, thought process and advice and guidance was a little too extensive um, as far as coverage amounts, but he actually was able to talk me through, you know, what his thought process was. And after that, I was like, you know what, you're actually right there. I, I think that, you know, I, I kind of just jumped the gun a little bit and just having those conversations, that dialogue, it's important. Um, you know, and you kind of hit on education. I think that this is, this is a place where delegation has a fine line, in my opinion, um, because you want to have somebody that you can turn to when you need to make decisions, um, but you don't necessarily just want to delegate the whole thing to them. I think that that's a, there's a major disconnect sometimes when people think of delegation, especially when it comes to, to financial advisors and investing, is somebody will say, I'm not really interested in this, so I want to pass this on to you, but I have no interest in learning on it. If we make money, it's on you. If we lose money, it's on you. And I think that's where you need to kind of shift that mindset of saying, hey, I want to delegate the day-to-day -day process of this, but it's still really important for me to recognize and understand what we're doing and why we're doing it. And I think that's yeah. across every board um, because it puts, that, yeah. it puts you back in the driver's seat to a point because in, in all reality, this is your money. This is your life. These are your decisions. The people you're putting around you are people that you can go to for guidance in order to ultimately make a decision, right? Um, and so just making sure that you're you're firstly finding somebody that is interested in educating you in the process and the, the who, what, when, where, and why we're doing things. But secondly, so you can just become more informed in the moment and in the situation as to why you're doing things. And, you know, lastly, one of the things that I was going to say on this end is it's basically impossible to be as up to date, as educated and as relevant as possible in every single one of these categories, just on your own, right? Rules and legislations, constantly changing. Product quality, constant changing. Um, new strategies, constantly changing. As an advisor, you, are, you legitimately are unable to be the expert of all experts in investments, and insurance and tax and estate planning. And you're probably not a licensed professional in all of those either. Um, so that's the importance of delegation. The teamwork yeah. aspect is so important here. Yeah. And that, you know, even us, like you said, as us as advisors, right? I can speak to the elements of a will and the importance of it, but I can't write one up. Yeah. I can speak to tax planning to a certain extent. I can speak to, you know, doing taxes, but I don't want to do taxes, right? So like yeah. there's certain things that you just have to delegate. You have to pass off to the experts, to the professionals. Yeah. Um, so kind of swinging it now, we kind of, we talked a lot about the W-2. So what are some of the differences, Thomas, that a business owner would face? Are there any additional um, professionals you think? Do they change roles as professionals, take on new tasks? Yeah. Yeah. I think the, the main, the two main differences between the first conversation we were having kind of centered more around W-2 families and a business owner that could include their own family is firstly that the, the professionals in their life are dealing with two different situations. They're dealing with firstly the business and the business owner, and secondly, their own personal assets or personal lives, right? So each professional is now wearing two kind of different hats for that business owner. Um, is they're dealing on the business side and the personal side. So having professionals that can work in both areas is important because not all people can. Um, so there, there's kind of a step up per se and the level of professionalism that you need to find in each area as a business owner. But secondly, is that business owner most likely is dealing with additional employees that they have to support, right? And so that's going to call in more professionals. So I would say that all the professionals that we listed on the W-2 side would apply. So that's advisor, accountant, insurance, estate. They're probably going to need to add some sort of a business attorney. Um, that's normally a good one to have. Um, I'd also say a health insurance agent 
And the reason why I say that is on the insurance side, most people that deal on personal lines, so uh, property and casualty, so home, auto, umbrella will not also do health. Um, because if you're a business owner and you have employees, health insurance is, is normally a conversation that you have at some point in time. Um, having a health insurance um, you know, professional in your life, but also any sort of retirement plan management. So depending on your advisor's setup, you might have some sort of um, you know, retirement plan specialist that you also have in your life that's actually managing the compliance of the plan. Um, and I've even seen certain business owners having like an exit plan strategist. It's actually a designation that you can have now. Um, but some sort of person that's helping you create a process to scale and then sell your business, um, yeah. you know, is, is, is another option for, for people in your life as well. I think you really hit on all of them. Um, the only thing I'd emphasize that you already said is, you know, these people have to be aware of both your business life and your personal life, understand your, your goals and wishes on both ends and make sure that they're, they're coordinated in whatever decisions you make. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I'd say kind of just wrapping this up, the the key points that that we wanted to hit on here is firstly that everybody should have a team, right? You're you're essentially kind of in the way that that I look at this, most people will take like the CEO route, like you're the CEO of your life. I honestly kind of look at it more of like a presidency, to be completely honest, is you know, you are the one that's ultimately making all the decisions, but you've got to hire those right members. Uh, of your cabinet per se, that um, are experts in each specific section of the field. Um, and, you know, you need to make sure those people are qualified. They are educating you on the matters at hand, uh, but they're ultimately going to lean on you to make those decisions. So you need to be versed enough through the education that they provide to feel confident in making those decisions. And, I love that. And <laughs> I love that analogy. You know, not get too political, but um, you know, it's 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 an analogy that tends to work uh, because I think people are often critical of of that uh, role. Yeah. So you know, it makes yeah. sense. And um, it introduces a good checks and balances system yeah. too. Yeah. You know, absolutely. everyone. You know, each every single person is you know again with the accountant and the advisor. You know, you, if they come with different ideas, it's a good checks and balances. You know, yeah. working out so it's the best solution for you. Yeah, and and lastly, just again, the 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 true importance of this is finding the people that you can turn to when you need to make an important decision, right? Making decisions on emotion is normally not the most logical way to do it. Um, and having people that can kind of be independent of that situation, still caring about you, still emotionally involved, but they're not going through it personally to make the right decision is super important. And just building out a, a, a time frame of trust. Um, doing this early so that when the critical moments occur, you can rely on those people and feel comfortable with it. Um, I think that's the, the most important part of the conversation. Yep. I think we had it all. Perfect. Awesome. Well, Kyle, thank you for your, your advice and guidance here. Always appreciate it. Um, thank you to everybody watching, listening, doing a little bit of both. Um, if anybody has any questions on, on these topics, we, we love engaging in this conversation. So please feel free and reach out to us. If you have any topics that you would, would like us to maybe talk about, feel free and, and shoot us a message, an email, a DM. Um, that's what this is all about. We'd love to hear from you. And we look forward to seeing you guys next week. Thanks.